Amen. This morning, I want to talk to you about potential. Potential is defined as existing in possibility. I want to remind you that with God, all things are possible. Potential is what can be. In a sense, potential is power, ability, or resources that are not yet being used. It's not seen. It's who you can be. It's not who you have been. It's who you or what you can accomplish, not what you have accomplished. And I want you to know that the Lord holds us accountable not just for what we did or didn't do. He also holds us accountable for what we could do. The Bible says, in fact, as Jesus says it in Luke 12, 48, to whom much is given, much is required. We're accountable to God for whatever he has entrusted to us. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells a parable about three men who were entrusted with a great sum of wealth while their master was away on a trip. One received five talents. And by the way, this word talent here has nothing to do with uh, giftings like what we think of as talent today, but it was just a measure of money. They say that a talent was an average man's lifetime income. It would probably be well over a million dollars in today's economy. One man received five talents, one man received two talents, and one received one talent. Now, Jesus put this in, uh, you know, we just need to get this perspective that this was a, a huge amount of money that was entrusted to these people, and they are accountable for it. In the parable, the, the one with five talents, he used it and gained five more. The one with two talents also doubled what he had, but the one with one talent hid it away. When the master returned in Matthew 25 and 21, he says to the two that doubled what they had, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. They fulfilled their potential. The third man brought the money that was entrusted to him. And he says, Matthew 25, 25, I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered him and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I had not scattered, scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. Different amounts given to each one. It's not up to us how much we are given. But it is up to us to be responsible with what we have. See, we don't decide how much we start with, but we are accountable to God for what we do with it. The one who didn't, Jesus said that he was called wicked and lazy. We got to take the treasure that we've been given and use it to its fullest potential. The evaluation of our life here on earth is based on stewardship. What we've done with what was entrusted to us, not just treasure in regard to money. In fact, I, I want you to understand Jesus is using money as an illustration and certainly, we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the money that God entrusts to us. But Jesus is using this as an illustration for us to understand because there are things in this life that are much more important than money. This is also about relationships and gifts and abilities and opportunities and even the time that God gives us here on this earth. See, we need to understand, we all know there's a lot of things more important than money. I mean, what about the children that have been entrusted to your care? What about a ministry that has been entrusted to you? What about those opportunities to make a difference in somebody else's life? 
that's been entrusted to you. You know, we've all, as believers, we're entrusted with spiritual truths. Paul talks about how that they are stewards of the mysteries of God. Do you realize that there are a lot of people that don't know what you know? And you have been entrusted with spiritual truth. What are you going to do with that? You see, God will hold us accountable for all of the things that we've been entrusted with. And our potential, Here's this is really important. When we talk about potential this morning, we are not just talking about worldly success and achievement. No, we're talking about something much more important than that. King Solomon had it all and did it all. I mean, if you read Ecclesiastes and if you read the Bible about King Solomon, you will see how he had this tremendous wealth and he accomplished everything that his heart imagined. He, he did it all. And yet this is what he says about it. Meaningless. Meaningless. In this world, you see, so often we admire those with great wealth or those who achieve great things, but at the end of this life, those things can just turn up meaningless. The only significance to those things, whether it's wealth and achievement and success, the only real significance is how it affects fulfilling the purpose of God in your life. Because you see, this is what really matters about potential. Our real potential has to do with the purpose of God in our life. Not just success by the world standards. No, it has to do with the purpose of God. And listen to this. The purpose of God always, always is about people. That's the only thing in this world that He cares about is the people in this world. And His purpose and His plan always has to do with other people. So understand this. The potential in your life, you see what ultimately matters is how it affects the purpose of God. That's your true potential in life is what is the purpose of God in your life. And that has to do with other people. You know, Jesus told the story about a rich man who had great success in Luke 12, 16 through 21. Then he spake a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. This guy had reached the American dream. He had financial security. He could put his feet up. He's just going to eat, drink, and be merry. Just sit back and enjoy life. He's got it all together. But then Jesus says, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You see, our true potential really is about the purpose of God in our life. That's what has real and lasting meaning is the purpose of God. And you see, this is something that relates to all of us. You may not be rich and famous, but all of us, God has a purpose for our life. And all of us can make a difference in somebody else's life. That's potential that's a potential that not only affects this life, but the one to come. That's real potential. You know, I think it's hard for us sometimes just to accept the responsibility that we have potential. I mean, it's easier just to devalue ourselves and, you know, we can think of others who have so much more. They can do it, but what can I do? It's easy for us to devalue ourselves because if we acknowledge that we have potential, then it puts on us that responsibility, as some would say, to live up to your potential. To do what God wants us to do with our lives. 
Sometimes we compare. We say, well, I don't have what so-and-so has. I can't do what they can do. But potential is not about what you don't have. This is kind of an American thing. We think a lot and talk a lot about what we don't have. No, potential is about what you do have. It's not about what you can't do. It's about what you can do. You need to understand, you see, that God values you. He knows that there is a great potential in you. But to begin to understand that potential, you have to know you're valuable to the Lord. And to understand your value, you need to understand the price that was paid for you. The value of something is what somebody is willing to pay for it. And let's talk about what he paid. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The price that was paid for you was the precious blood of Christ. That's how valuable that you are to God. He paid that price. Listen, not for what we were. Oh, He died for us while we were yet sinners. He paid that price not for what we were, sinners, stinkers, losers, some of us. Come on now. I mean, He didn't pay such a great price for what we were. He paid such a great price for what we could become, the sons and daughters of God. That's what he calls us, Jesus, the firstborn among many brethren. We have been predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. That's the value that Jesus, that the Lord saw in us. That's why he paid such a great price. He saw the potential in us. He knew what we could be. You need to know there's great potential in you. 1 John 3, 9 says that His seed is in you. There's no limit to what His seed can produce in your life. There's greatness in you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. There's greatness in you. If you're a born-again Christian, there's greatness in you. Now, years ago... My wife says to me, she says, I see greatness in you. I'm thinking, man, love really is blind, (laughs) right? And I didn't believe her. I didn't get it. I do now. Some of you are thinking, you arrogant preacher. Pay attention. I already told you there's greatness in you. Listen to me. I don't believe there's greatness in me because my sweet little wife told me. I believe there's greatness in me because 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I believe that the Holy Spirit, God himself, lives in the life of the believer. Greater, I'm talking to you now, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You see, there is greatness in you. There's great potential in you because the greater one lives inside of you. The enemy of your soul, I want to tell you, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take that away from you. He wants to devalue you. He wants to think you can't. He wants you to think that God's not going to use you. Because of the grace of God, you see, there's great potential in your life. And that potential is irreplaceable. You know, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet, and yet there's no two with the same fingerprint. Now, even if your DNA were to be duplicated, there's nobody just like you with your life experiences and who God has made you to be. And there is nobody who can fulfill the purpose that God has for you the way that you can. You need to understand that there's irreplaceable potential in your life. Satan will try to depreciate you through events and negative thoughts and demeaning words. 
And listen, what happens to so many people when they don't see any potential in their life, like this is just all there is, they they fall into this negative pattern, self-defeating habits, and they just spiral downward. That's the work of the enemy. That's Satan keeping people from fulfilling the purpose of God in their life, failing to reach their potential. You know, most of us have some wasted potential. I mean, if you've lived very long at all, you've had the opportunity to waste some potential. And the brutally honest truth about that is is that sometimes when potential is wasted, it's gone. But you never know what potential still remains. That by the grace of God... You see, we serve a God of another chance. You say, how many? There's one more. The God of another chance. There's been so many that God has used miraculously that the world and even religious people would have said, oh, there's no way. And yet God did. See, we could sit in despair over the wasted opportunities, but the important thing is what we are going to do with the future opportunities. Because, listen, potential of the past is no longer potential. It's what remains. That's the potential yet to be fulfilled. And we have to focus on the future and what God wants to do. Don't focus on what could have been. You focus on what can be. What potential lies in you? Well, really, only God knows. But you need to know this, that no matter what mistakes or failures you made, there's still potential in you. If you think that you are no longer valuable to God, you've been deceived. If you think that your potential is gone, you've been deceived. And I want to say to you very plainly this morning that your mistakes are not bigger than God. His power, His grace is bigger than all of your mistakes and all of your sins. So don't focus on your past. Move on to the potential that God has placed in you. Potential is what you can really do. It's not what you've done yet. Potential is how far you can go, not how far you've gone. Philippians 3, 12 through 14, Paul says, Not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, he's talking about leaving the past behind. He says, this one thing I do, I'm reaching forward. That's what we have to do. Don't be focused on the past. You focus on the future and the potential that God has in your life, the purpose that God has in your life. we got to keep pressing forward to fulfill our potential because it's, it's not in the past. It's in the purpose of God. Paul said, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. You know what he's talking about? Purpose. He knew that there was a reason. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Every one of us, there is a reason that Christ Jesus has taken hold of us. There is a purpose in our life. There is a potential to be fulfilled. We need to know that. It takes faith, you see, to move forward and to believe God for that potential to come to pass. Remember this, the servant who did nothing, he said he was afraid. Maybe he was afraid of failure. Maybe he was afraid of not pleasing the master. But because of his fear, he failed and didn't please the master. So don't let fear keep you from reaching your potential. Instead, you believe. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Believe God. 
to reach your potential. I know some people, they think, hey, I'm too young for all of this, maybe someday, but most of us have lived a few years. We would tell those young people, young, young people I'm talking about, children, teenagers, young adults as well, we would tell them, oh, no, don't waste it, don't waste it, because we've all wasted some. Right? And your parents, you're like, you want your kids not to waste any opportunity, not to waste their potential, but take advantage of it now so they don't have regrets. And then there's a lot of us too that we think we're too old really to talk much about potential. It's all past now. There's not much left now, not much to talk about. I'll tell you, we should never limit God because when you read the Bible, you see young people with great potential, but you also see older people that God still used. How about Abraham at 100 years old? And Romans says that his body was as good as dead. What potential is left in this man? The potential to be the father of many nations. He and his wife had their first child when Abraham was 100 years old. And his descendants were as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. What potential was in this man? There were many in the scripture like Joshua and Caleb that at 80 years of age, they went in as great warriors into the promised land and drove out their enemies. You just should never limit what God can do. And here's the thing. You see, in the body of Christ, so often it seems like as we get a little older, We step aside and we say, well, my day's past. I want you to hear me now. We need the wisdom of the elderly in our church. And I thank God for the older saints in this church that you have giftings and abilities and wisdom that needs to be imparted. Why should the younger generation have to learn everything the hard way? You know what I'm saying? It, listen, it's scriptural that the older teach the younger. But I think for a lot of us, you know, and I, I've, I've had to address some feelings. The Lord dealt with me about my feelings about this this morning. You know... I could just take it easy, just live out my days until the Lord comes or I go home. No, no, there's still a potential left in me. And I'll tell you, the Lord just put that on me real clear. I ain't done with you, boy. And I'm telling some of you, he ain't done with you. There's still a potential in your life. And it might be that you make a difference in some five-year-old kid in a, in a children's class and they're never the same and they talk about you when they're 40, about how they got saved. Oh, we just, we just can't limit the potential that God has for our lives. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what Hebrews 11.1 1 says. It doesn't take faith to live in what you see. It takes faith to believe for what you can't see, to reach forward. See, that potential is limited by the lack of faith and by fear and unbelief. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He can do far more than we can even imagine. Did you know God doesn't get upset when people pray big prayers? He has never gotten upset because somebody believed Him for too much or expected too much of Him. But Psalm 78 tells us that the children of Israel provoked the Lord's wrath because they limited God. How can you limit God? They limited Him working in their lives because they didn't believe His promise. They didn't believe. And I just want you to understand, if we want to see God's potential, His purpose fulfilled in our life, we have to believe Him. Believe God to bless your work. Believe God for guidance and success in your schoolwork. Believe God for greater impact and influence in ministry. I'll tell you, there's no limits with God. With God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. 
So believe him for great things. They say that you can take a little baby shark, eight inches, and put it in a small aquarium, and it will stay eight inches long. You can take the same baby shark and go release it in the ocean, and it'll become eight feet long. I just want you to understand that sometimes our potential is greatly hindered by our surroundings and our environment. And the first one I want to mention is something that, well, our youth pastor talked about it when he was talking about fellowships. It's the people around you in your life. Now, I want to clarify, we want to reach people. You can't reach people if you don't talk to people. And certainly, we have to have relationships with lost people and backslidden Christians. Yes, we want to always try to reach out to those people and minister to them. But your close friends, your companions, those people you hang out with all the time, you need to be hanging out with people that love God and that will build you up and encourage you and strengthen your faith. You can't soar like an eagle when you're hanging out with turkeys. You need to be around some people of like faith, people that we call brothers and sisters around here, family, church family, people that will help you. You know, when you you talk about what you're believing God for, you talk about potential and possibilities, they're not the voice of the enemy saying, oh, you could never do that. They're the ones saying, yes, with God, all things are possible. That's the kind of people that we need in our life. You know, for somebody else, it might be something that's keeping you from growing. You know, it, it might be you're stuck in this job and you know that it's time for you to move on and you just feel like you're going in circles but it takes faith to step out. You don't want to go out of the fire and, or out of the frying pan into the fire. But sometimes it's time for God wants to move you. Sometimes it's because you know we're at a place where we just need to be willing to do something new in our life. And sometimes it may be that you you you've stopped growing because you refuse to get involved in ministry. Or maybe there's a particular area of ministry. Maybe you've been doing this or you've done that before, but now God wants to move you into something different and you're resistant to that. I'm just telling you, sometimes you got to be willing to step out in faith. It's, It's just always more comfortable to stay in the aquarium and what you know, but sometimes we got to be willing to change some things to pursue fulfilling our potential. You know, when you're believing God, the devil will always try to send somebody to talk you down. Somebody to try to speak unbelief to you. Somebody that will give you excuses, deceptions that will bind you up and keep you from your potential if you'll allow it. That's why you need to stay in the Word and why you need to be in a church that preaches the Word because that truth sets free But there's such potential in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I will build my church and even the very gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. Nothing can stop the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that about the local church. I believe that about this church, that Jesus is still building his church. I believe our best days are ahead, that there is a harvest that Jesus wants us to bring in. And I want to tell you, see, we need to see the potential. We need to know that God is not through, that God wants to do great things in this day and time, and we get to be a part of it. Yes, our God who can do anything. So often He waits for us to believe Him for great things. We got to believe big, ask big. To do otherwise, I think, just displeases the Lord. We're not responsible for where we were born, but we're responsible for the choices we make. We're responsible for what we do with our potential. 
You see, too many people just kind of let life happen to them. They live by default, and they get stuck in a rut because they're just living by default. Sometimes we need to make a decision that I am going to pursue the purpose of God. I want to reach my potential, and we got to be willing to act in faith. See, remember what Paul said. He said, I want to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Every day, you see, we need to have that mindset. I want to find the purpose of God. I want to live in the purpose of God and fulfill all that He has for me. Maybe some of you this morning, you're not really in a good place right now. Maybe you're going through a difficult time, and I certainly understand we all at times in our life go through those things. But there was a man of God named Elijah hiding out in a cave. Now, Elijah had had great victories, but at this point in his life, he's very discouraged. This wicked Jezebel has put a hit out on him, and he feels like he's all alone. He's, you know, just to put it simply, it seems that he's kind of feeling sorry for himself. He's really down, and he says, I'm the only one that's serving God. But then the Lord speaks to him from a still small voice, and he says, you're wrong. There are 7,000 who are still serving me. He said, you're not looking, you're not seeing things right. And if you're down this morning, believe me, I want to help you when I tell you, you got to see things from God's perspective. It's easy for us sometimes, we're going through a hard time to feel sorry for us, but I just want you to know that we serve a mighty God who is able to turn it around. He's able to bring victory, and He will call you out of that cave. Because guess what? He's not done with you. You see, He called Elijah out of that cave because there were still two kings that He was going to anoint. There was still another prophet that He was going to anoint. God wasn't through with him. And when you know that God is not through with you, that He still has a purpose, a plan, and a potential for your life, you'll get out of that cave and go on with God. I just want you to understand, yes, there's hard times, but God has a purpose. And when you get about the master's business, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing how those things that where we were so down, all of a sudden we've, we're overcoming, we've got breakthrough. So I encourage you, go after that potential that God has for you. And don't lose hope. We serve a God of hope. We ought to always have hope about our future, you see, because hopelessness will rob you of your potential. You think that there's no hope? You just give up on your potential. When Abraham was promised a son, the Scripture says in Romans that as the years went by and nothing happened, this is what Abraham did. He hoped against hope. I mean, when there was no hope, he hoped in God anyway, and he saw that potential fulfilled. Unused power is potential. Our God has all power, so he has a limitless supply of power and a limitless supply of potential. He's never done all he can do. You know, scientists say there are 60 billion galaxies in the universe, and each one has hundreds of millions of stars. Our Milky Way galaxy is just one of many, many, many. Our sun is just one star. How much power is in this universe? And where did it come, come from? It all came out of God. Yes. It all came from Him. John 1, 3, all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. The galaxies and all the countless stars, they came out of Him. Such power. 
And yet, his power is not diminished in any way. He still has all power. There is nothing that he cannot do. Amazing. So think about this. There was God by himself, standing on nothing, by the corner of nowhere. In eternity, all by himself, God existed. And if somehow you could go back to that point and you could meet God and shake hands with him there on the corner of nowhere, standing on nothing, you would be shaking hands with everything. But you wouldn't have known it because it was potential yet to be fulfilled before he spoke it all into being. And here's the thing. When we shake hands with other people, they're not God. But you don't know the potential that's in that person. You don't know the God-given potential that's in another person. We all know 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But most people don't know that in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, just the verse before, he says, we no longer regard anyone after the flesh. We don't just look at people and make judgments about them because we don't know what God might do in their life. And we need to understand this. You see, most of us don't even have a clue about the potential that God has for us, much less the potential that God has for somebody else. How we need to be careful and not to judge, but leave that to God. I think that's a big part of the problem with how we treat people sometimes. We don't realize what treasure may be in that earthen vessel. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power of God may be of the power, uh, excuse me, of the power may be of God and not of us. It's God's power in our lives. This treasure that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And realize this, you see, there's that treasure in other people. Treasure, a potential that God still plans to fulfill. Sometimes we discount people. We count them out. We lower their value. Remember, God paid such a high price for them. So be careful how you treat people. I want to say to you this morning very plainly that our goal is not to get to heaven. (laughs) Wow. Wow. I don't understand how so many Christians have this mentality today. I'm saved and going to heaven. That's all that matters. I just do what I want. Our goal is to live up to our potential, to fulfill the purpose of God in our life, that one day He will say about us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not you wicked, lazy servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's our goal is to please our master and to fulfill all that he had for us. Who would have thought that some guy named Moses, who's living in the palace of Pharaoh, he's got it all made, you know, he's got such an easy life. And then he kills a man. Who would have thought that this killer would become God's deliverer. Strange. What potential was in this man? You know, when Moses killed a man, his brethren didn't appreciate it. They saw him as a killer. And one of them says to him, are you going to kill me too? He had a reputation, not as a deliverer like we know him, but as a killer. And who would have thought that a killer would be the one that God gave the Ten Commandments to? And one of them says, thou shalt not kill. 
I mean, what an irony. We just need to understand that our God, He can choose who He uses and He can fulfill great things in spite of your past, in spite of your failures. God is not limited. Amazing. When you read the Bible, and it's not just the grace of the New Testament, we see it all through the Old Testament, how that God used people who were flawed. Don't be bitter against people who don't see your potential because I want to tell you, they don't see their own either. And your boss may not see it, your teacher may not see it, your pastor may not see it, Mm. but don't let people what people think about you, destroy your potential. Let me give you some modern-day examples of some who fulfilled potential in their life. Ray McCauley, he was an eighth-grade dropout. He became a bouncer in nightclubs. In the 50s, he was Mr. South Africa. He was third to Arnold Schwarzenegger in Mr. Universe. He was a steroid-using, uneducated playboy. Nobody saw that this man would eventually pastor a church of 50,000 in South Africa and be a leader, a spiritual leader, to his nation. Who would have ever dreamed that some steroid-using guy pumping iron and hanging out in the gym that God would have such potential in him. How about Casey Treat? Casey Treat was a convicted felon. He was busted three times for selling or using drugs. He's a high school dropout, skinny hippie with long hair. He was a loser. And the judge sends him to a rehab program where a spirit-filled black Marine, ex-Marine, witnesses to him, shares the Lord with him, and he gets saved and spirit-filled and called to the ministry, and he pastors one of the biggest churches in the Northeast and still travels the world sharing the gospel. How about this one? This guy, he works at this church. He is the director, producer of their uh, TV Program being put on air. Who's this guy? Well, he now pastors a church of 50,000, preaches to tens of millions on TV. His name is Joel Osteen. And nobody saw the potential in this director, producer, except for God and probably his dad. It's amazing what potential might be inside of somebody. How about Simon the Reed who denied Jesus? But Jesus calls him Peter the Rock. And eventually, this one who denied Jesus would give his life for Jesus. And he's one of the ones that helped turn the world upside down. How about Saul the persecutor? who became Paul the apostle. How can this be? You see, we don't understand such great potential that God has put in our lives, but it's there. How about David, little shepherd boy? But he was anointed to be king, and God used him to kill Goliath. How about Gideon, chicken little hiding out? But God says, Hail you mighty man of valor. And God used him to bring victory to the people of God. He made such a difference for the people of God. What a hero. Maybe you could be a hero to somebody that doesn't know the Lord. You can make such a difference in their life. How about Rahab? Who is God going to use to help the mighty spies that have been sent in to the promised land to spy out the land. Who is he going to use? Here's a prostitute. I'm going to use this prostitute. Who would have had that idea? Not religious people. God did. That's who he used. And it gets 
even more bizarre when you consider that this woman who sold her body to men is in the lineage of Jesus that sanctified by the precious blood of the Lamb, she became part of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Potential. Who would have thought? Uh No, for us it kind of goes like this. Well, look who showed up at church. Can you believe what she's wearing? Well, she's got a tattoo of a serpent on on her shoulder. How awful. Y'all got real quiet. (laughs) You see, the Lord loves to confound proud people with weak, foolish, and even the outcast. When He chooses the twelve that would later turn the world upside down, He chose unlearned fishermen. He chose thieves and an IRS agent. I mean, who would have picked those guys He didn't choose who He would have chosen. You see, that means there's hope for you and me. That there's potential in us. See, all those people God called, they weren't living up to their potential. Doubting Thomas. He refused to believe Peter, the rock. He went back to fishing. Jesus called those guys the light of the world. He calls us the light of the world. Sometimes we may not look like it or act like it. But you see, that's the potential in us, to be the light of the world, to turn the world upside down again. We've probably all heard these famous words. For all the sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, what might have been. How sad to look back on past opportunities. Maybe you've made some mistakes. Maybe a failed marriage. A career down the tubes. A ministry that's no longer... But here's the thing, God's not through with you. There's still something in you. There's still potential in your life unfulfilled. And you can't do anything about your past, but you can do something about your future because there's still potential. We ought to consider these less famous words. For all the glad words of tongue or pen, the gladdest are these. No regrets. Don't live beneath your potential. By faith, let him who has all power... Work in your life today to bring about His purpose in your life. You see, when we do that, our path is bright. The Bible says the path of the righteous is like the noonday sun. It gets brighter and brighter. We ought to be looking forward to our future, saying, I'm going to need sunglasses. It's going to get so good. You see, that's believing and expecting God's blessing and expecting to fulfill your your potential in the plan of God. I want to say one more time. You see, God used all of these failures and wicked people, people that made mistakes, because He wants us to know that there's still purpose for us. He can do anything in our lives if we'll allow His power to work in us. How do you reach Your potential. Well, first, you got to believe God. You can't do it on our own. No, it's God. But with God, all things are possible. Next, focus on yourself, not on yourself or your situation, but focus on God. Focus on what you have. Don't focus on what you don't have. Oh, I don't have this. I don't. Focus on what you have, what God has given you to work with. And here's the thing, if you'll be faithful with it, He says He'll give you more. Don't focus on your past, but you focus on your future. 
Don't focus on what could have been, but focus on what can be. Some of you need to make a decision this morning not to live by default, but to go after the purpose of God and fulfill your potential. Some of you this morning need to let God, who created everything, create in you a new creation. He loves you. He's for you. He wants you. He paid the ultimate price for you. And he has a plan, a purpose, and potential for your life. I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray. I'd like for our prayer partners to come.